Hi, I made. Today I'm making a video about the WavePool video synthesizer. And the reason I'm making this is because as I was setting this up, I had some questions and I went through a lot of trial and error in getting this set up. So this is the video that I wish I would have had when I was getting set up with the WavePool. Uh, this isn't a demo of the WavePool, although I might play with it a little bit here towards the end of the video. So just as a brief explanation of what the wave pool is and what it does, all the software for the wave pool is run off of a Raspberry Pi, which you can see here, Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B plus. To control the wave pool, you have a MIDI controller. It's recommended that, that you use this Korg Control 2 MIDI controller because the layout and just the amount of buttons work pretty well for a video synthesizer. The reason it was a challenge for me is because it was hard to get my head around the video inputs and the video outputs, what goes in where, what you can do, what you can't do. Let me just point out things on the Raspberry Pi so you can get a sense of, of what's happening here. Easy one is, is the power. Power is coming in there. This is the HDMI output. So this HDMI is going out and then into my monitor. I'll show you another setup soon that uses this headphone jack for video output, but we'll save that for later. Next is the camera input. So this USB is going to this camera. This camera is a Logitech 720p camera. This is the recommended camera. They say that uh, you need a clean USB camera input, which not all cameras provide, which is why that's the recommended camera. But you don't have to do your video at input from a camera. You could do it from, a, say, a DVD player. So I'll show you that in a, in a setup here in a moment. This is the USB that's going out and into the MIDI controller. The video coming in to my monitor here is, a, it looks like a clean video signal, but that's only because I haven't adjusted any effects with the video synthesizer. So just to show that it's working, if I uh, start to key out The video, you can see that uh, it is starting to uh, it is working, and now you can start to see why why this is so fun. Because even though I've just started, I, it's hard to stop because it's it's just so much fun. Okay, but I'll reset that so you can see see my camera. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, the Raspberry Pi card that's going in here. So this one is a Raspberry Pi 3B+, and I ordered that uh, new. And the side effect of that is that uh, it has the latest Raspberry Pi firmware. There's a conflict between Raspberry 3B+, firmware, and the image for wave pools that is available. If you're in that situation, there's a Discord for wave pools. And if you go in there, there's a, a newbie channel. And uh, there's a set of files that you have to copy over on top of uh, the image to correct that. You'll know that you're in that situation. If you burn your wave pool image, stick it in, fire it up, and instead of a, it just working, you'll get a flashing light. Uh, I believe it was four long blinks followed by seven short blinks. I did have a second Raspberry Pi, which was just a Raspberry 3, which is older, didn't have the latest firmware. That one worked right out of the out of the gate with the Raspberry Pi image. This isn't a tutorial about Raspberry Pi in general, so if none of that made sense, you're gonna have to look for uh, tutorials on Raspberry Pi and how to burn burn images for it. It's not that hard if you've never done it. All right, let me tell you a little bit about what's happening with the, the video out here because there's there's some different things to keep in mind. So right now it's going out and into my monitor here. One of the things you might want to do is record that video so that you could use it later. In that situation, I would want to go out the HDMI and into my computer. I'm on a Mac, so that that means I need to use a adapter like this. This is called a cam link. It basically lets you plug an HDMI in one side 
and then USB goes into your computer, and now your computer will recognize this HDMI signal as a camera that you could you could record. That's what's working for me. But in theory, anything that can capture an HDMI signal would be able to capture it off of this HDMI line. Another thing you might want to do is, let's say you had that running to your computer to record, but you also want to feed it to a monitor like that. In that case, you could use a HDMI splitter like this. It takes one HDMI out and then gives you two HDMI outs from that. Uh, and I've tested that. That works just fine. You can also get video out through this audio headphone jack, which is a little weird. It's just not very intuitive, right? You wouldn't think that an audio headphone jack would be able to do video out but it does, and in order to do that, it's recommended that you buy this little adapter. You can see the headphone jack here, and then the old composite RCA video jacks here. In our case, I'm pretty sure the audio red and white don't do anything, but the yellow would give you a video out feed that you could put into a monitor or uh, an old TV that takes this type of a jack. You might be wondering if you can use this in combination with the HDMI out. You cannot. You have to pick which which output you want to do. Uh, I was curious when I first was setting this up if you could take video in through that audio headphone jack. So because you know, I have cameras that, that give composite video out. So I thought maybe I could run a camera in through this and then out through the HDMI. I might just be missing something or doing something wrong, but that is not an option. As far as I can tell, this is only video out. So I think that covers the, the video out aspect. All the input for video is done through USB. So right now I've got the camera going in USB, but if you want to bring video in, say from a DVD player or any other video source, it has to come in through this USB port. I'm going to switch things up a little bit and show you what it looks like to have a uh, video coming in from a DVD source. Anytime you are making changes to your inputs or outputs, uh, you're probably going to have to restart the Raspberry Pi. It does some sort of sensing when it first powers up to know where to put the video out and where the video is coming in. So if you were just to hot swap this, it probably wouldn't work. So I'm going to turn this off and turn it back on with a new video source. All right, I'm going to turn this back on and uh, I want you to see the startup screen as this as this loads so you know what it looks like when it's operating correctly it's going to be showing uh all right yeah so you should get a slash splash screen like that and then it should flash the raspberry pi desktop before uh before launching the wave pool and you saw it there if you wanted to sort of interrupt that uh if you had a keyboard plugged into this you could hit escape at the point that you see the desktop and then you could launch wave pools and some of the other applications that come with with wave pools from uh, from the desktop just using your your mouse and keyboard you'll note that i don't have a mouse and keyboard plugged in in theory you shouldn't need that because once you burn the image stick your your sd card into the raspberry pi and launch it up it should just work And now you can see that I'm getting a DVD video signal. And that is coming from portable DVD player. You'll see that I have a different, uh, something else other than the camera plugged in to the Raspberry Pi. So let me show you what's actually happening on the other side of this cord here. This is a video capture HDMI cord. Uh, so the HDMI video is coming in. It's being converted to something uh, USB. Uh, I've got a, a newer USB-C style here, so there's another adapter here so that I can get the old USB port here. But you, they do make these with, with the older USB connection. So this is how you would get any HDMI signal, not just from a DVD. So if you had a camera that had output of HDMI, you could put that HDMI camera in here and then, again, the, the thing to remember is it, it has to be coming through that USB port. Here's my DVD player so you can see it's basically just mirroring the signal from the DVD player.
So for fun, I could just play a little bit with, with the video synthesizer now, just based on that DVD input. Yeah, and that gives you a sense of what's capable with this wave blown light. So much fun. There's one other adapter that you might be interested in because um, I find I'm in situations where I need to convert uh, composite RCA to HDMI. This is the adapter I use. Uh, this is the RCA video coming in and then HDMI video going out. And this is actually what I'm using in this setup. I didn't didn't mention it at first because in theory, it would work the same with any HDMI that's going. But this particular DVD player, uh, the output is this RCA. And so I'm doing a conversion of RCA to HDMI there. All right, I'm back to show the other setup here. Uh, the difference here is that uh, we're use, instead of using the HDMI out, we're using the headphone jack video out. And we're using the adapter here that allows us to connect a RCA video cord to anything that supports that RCA video signal. I don't know exactly what the specs are, but I feel like the, the video coming out of the HDMI is cleaner. It might just be that my monitor here is older and, and doesn't give a crisp picture, but you know, it, in the world of video synths, sometimes that more gritty uh, look is what you're going for and you might, you might like that, or maybe you don't have an HDMI device to go to. So that's showing going to the so that's showing the, the video out. And as you can see, if I adjust here, um, you can see anything that I could do before on the, with the synthesizer I could do through that video out as well. This, this video adapter, I think ended up costing me after shipping eight bucks or something, but uh, you may have a video cord similar to this. The thing to, to know is that uh, I guess the, the setup in here is, a, is not your normal. That doesn't mean that the cord you have wouldn't, wouldn't work. You just might have to, you just have to figure out which section of the headphone jack corresponds with the video out. So I believe it's uh, the bottom one is ground. The next one up is the one that you need to feed video. Let's say in your particular cord, that second one uh, was coming to the to the red instead of the uh, the yellow. In that case, you could you could still use this cord, except uh, when you go to plug in your video, instead of plugging it in yellow, you would plug it into the to the red. You might just have to do some trial and error because different different cords have different uh, setups there, and it may or may not work. It shouldn't damage your 
your equipment if you hot swap and, and switch things around there. So uh, just do some experimentation. Like I said, I'm not an expert on the wave pool yet. I'm just still learning and, and having fun. But as you're learning this, you can see I added little labels to each of the buttons to help me remember what each knob does. And there are some provided overlays that you could you could use. Uh, I just found it was easier to print out labels with my little label printer and stick them on each each knob. But uh, personalizing your MIDI controller is part of the fun, I think. I ordered this on Amazon, and while I was waiting, uh, I couldn't I couldn't wait, so I had this other MIDI controller that I used with it. Uh, this one is an Akai MIDI mix. Other MIDI controllers will work. You just have to remap the uh, the buttons to so that your buttons here are mapped to the same signals that the, the Korg is connected to. So that's another thing to point out. When you when you get your MIDI controller, you need to plug into your Mac or PC. So you'll use the Korg software to remap the buttons to the, the corresponding uh, ports or whatever that, that these buttons point to. There is documentation for that on, on the WavePool website. It sounds a little tricky, but it's it's really not. Follow the directions and you should be good. It didn't seem like everything on the Akai Mini Mixer worked exactly the same as the Quark, so I would recommend getting this Quark controller too. I think it was uh, maybe $60, uh, so it's a little bit pricey, but it's it's a good device, and, and the wave pool is optimized for it. So. so those are my tips for getting set up with the wave pool. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but at least... This documents some of the things I couldn't find online, and uh, I hope this helps. I'd like to give a shout out to Andre J, the the person who did all the programming for the Wave Pool. It's a really amazing open source project. I encourage you to check out his videos. He does uh, in depth explanations of what each of these buttons do, and yeah, so I encourage you to check out his YouTube channel and his website. And uh, good luck, have fun, and thanks for watching.